We want to be able to share with you a little bit about our plan as Rush Creek Bible Church for how we re-engage ministry and worship. And to that end, uh, I have Brian Walker here with me, our chairman of the board. And Brian, I wonder if you could maybe just start off by sharing a little bit about um, kind of the gravity of the situation and what's ultimately led us as a church to this point where here in just a minute or two, uh, we're going to share with the congregation our plan for how we begin to re-enter ministry and worship. Thank you, Pastor Cam. Hi, Rush Creek family. It's really a pleasure to be here with you this morning. And, and as chairman of the board, I want to just give you a few updates of what we've come to so far. I think we're rounding into our 11th week of this mandatory isolation. And um, as we are here, our country and our, and our state in particular are going through a couple different realities. And there is a lot of tension, a lot of fear, and some confusion. And as a church board... We met several times this week just to describe and discuss how we might emerge from this time um, as we go into the summer months. On Monday, we had our May board meeting, and just since Monday, things changed. Things altered, even in our own state. And so we had another meeting on Friday morning. We're doing these by Zooms. And on Friday morning, we looked at a plan. And on Monday night, we had tasked um, Pastor Cam and our leadership team to come up with a plan of what it might look like to emerge out of this isolation and what the future of our church looking like normal would, would be. And so we, um, on Friday, looked at that plan that Pastor Cam and his, his team developed. And you're going to see that in a moment. Um, and then even on Friday afternoon, when things changed between Washington, D.C. and Lansing, we realized we needed to look at that plan again. And is that plan still appropriate? Does it still allow us to emerge in a way that not only gets us back together at an appropriate time, but actually even tends to those who are in fear and who are confused a little bit, and maybe those who are, are dealing with anger and frustration at the isolation of our state. Mm -hmm. So we want to have a plan that addresses all those things appropriately and safely and what it might look like as we emerge into different stages and cycles. So, um, Pastor Cam, I, I, I want to hand this over to you now. Yeah. Uh, and so to that end, one of, the, one of the difficulties, as Brian said, was, was for us as a church uh, to take all of the information, all of the different opinions and, and views of our church family, um, and to be able to, to kind of distill those into a plan uh, that that both honors how our church family is feeling, but also, uh, most importantly, honors the Lord in terms of what we feel he is leading us as leadership to put forth in front of you. Uh, and so and to that end, we, um, I, I saw this, this graphic on social media recently, and, and just to help maybe give you a picture of, of the difficulty of our task as leadership. Uh, there, there were a number of, of different things that, that this graphic indicated. Different viewpoints that people have heard uh, that pastors all around the country and that, that we as leaders are wrestling with as we try and put forward a plan. We're hearing things like, we can't open the building. It's a huge health risk. You're wrong if you do. At the same time, we're hearing it's, it's all a big hoax, a media frenzy. Read this article or click this link. While somebody else is saying, you know, one of my family members just died from coronavirus. Others might be saying, my family's going to stay home for a while before coming back. We're really sorry that we can't be there. Others might say, we are months away from being able to open the building. While still yet others are saying, so what message are we sending? That we're special? That we, can, we need to consider our witness to the community? While others may say, we need to open the church building right now. Why haven't we done this sooner? And I understand the reasoning behind all of those. I'm not saying any of those are wrong or any of those are specifically right. I'm simply trying to illustrate for you the difficulty of our task as leadership in terms of trying to put forth a plan that could somehow appease every single one of those viewpoints. Uh, it's nigh impossible. And so what we had to do as leadership was, was simply say, Lord, what are you asking us to do? What are you calling us to do? And then to, to share that with one another on, on our board and our staff and work through it and, and make sure we're looking at it from every angle. Realizing that we've already made commitments to you of how we were going uh, to make these decisions. Uh, we want to emphasize our mission in terms of fostering healthy relationships through healthy practices and protocols. We again want to make sure that we are discovering and developing new and unique ways to form community outside of just Sunday morning worship. There is so much opportunity for us as a church family to build relationship outside of just Sunday. And we want to investigate what those are and then employ them and make them happen. 
but we also wanna be reflecting Christ in our actions and not just in our activism. And so with all those things in mind, and, and also within mind, the realities of the CDC recommendations for how we can begin to uh, reemerge in a healthy way, we want to reveal to you a two-pronged uh, uh, attack in terms of how we're going to uh, re-enter our ministry efforts. And so those two uh, pieces of that puzzle involve both Sunday a.m. worship, but also ministries throughout the week. And what I want to say in preparation for uh, the next slide that you'll see in a minute is that our philosophy in this has been that we are going to go a little bit slower on Sunday mornings, but we're going to move a little bit quicker in ministry opportunities throughout the week. So with that in mind, I'd love to put up the graphic about Sunday mornings. As we have uh, talked through this, uh, we basically looked at the summer uh, as a threefold approach for Sunday morning worship. Uh, we have uh, the belief that there's an opportunity afforded to us through this coronavirus time as the restrictions begin to ease up. Even this past week, Governor Whitmer allowed for social gatherings of up to 10 people. That is a step in the right direction. Now, at the same time, she's also extended her stay safe, stay at home. And there's even confusion about how you can have the stay safe, stay at home at the same time as allowing social gatherings of up to 10 people. There's so much confusion surrounding this. And so we kind of even have to navigate our own path through this. And so here's what we're proposing. The first thing and the thing that you should get excited about, the first opportunity that we have to gather together as a church again on this property is on June 7th. On June 7th, we will be hosting a drive-in worship service. The drive-in movie that we're doing on Friday night actually serves as a little bit of a litmus test for our ability to do the drive-in worship service on a Sunday morning. Uh, it will be us doing the service on a stage outside uh, in a kind of the pavilion area where people are able to drive in their cars, tune their radios to a station that will have uh, the sound coming through it and be able to uh, maybe not have the best view of the stage was happening, but also see people as you're driving in and driving out and see people next to you and beside you and be able to worship in your car, but also have the safety of if you're nervous, uh, staying in your car, keeping your windows up, uh, and, and not having to worry about that. Uh, but if you're not, being able to roll down your window and wave and say hi. So you, we're going to give more information about that in the coming days. But June 7th is the first step and it's a full church. Everybody who wants to come is invited, but it's going to be outside a drive-in service. Following that, the month of June has a theme. And the theme of the month of June is house church worship. We're really excited about this because we feel that the house church model pushes us towards our mission statement of authentic relationships, genuine community, and reflecting Christ. And the house church model is for those families or individuals who feel comfortable. We want to encourage you to gather together in homes. Not here at the building yet, but in homes. We've already had uh, multiple people sign up to be willing to host others to their house for those who feel comfortable. We're not forcing anybody who doesn't feel comfortable to leave their house. And we will continue to do the online worship service uh, uh, for, for many months to come. Even after we do have people in the building, we'll still be doing online so that whoever feels uncomfortable being together with other people can still participate online. So the month of June, June 14, 21, and 28, we're excited to really promote and emphasize house church worship opportunities. For you to either go to somebody's house, maybe it's just extended family, or to invite somebody over to your house to watch our service online with you. Think of the opportunity that you have, even as it relates to your own neighborhood. Maybe it's neighbors that you've invited to church that have never come because it's awkward to say, hey, meet me at the building. Hopefully we get there at the same time. Hopefully we find the right door and there's space for us to find a seat where we can sit next to each other. And you have to be bold enough, neighbor, to want to do all that and hope that it works out. How much more easy would it be for them and for you to say, hey, you know what? How about you come on over to my house? I'd love to make you some breakfast or maybe do lunch afterwards and have you watch our church service with us in the comfort of our home, which probably they've been to before. We love this idea of house church worship and we want to really promote it for the three weeks in June after our drive-in service on the 7th. So that's the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. Following that, in the month of July, we're going to kick off the month of July with another drive-in service. Uh, we like the idea of, of, for those who don't want to do the house church or don't feel comfortable, another opportunity to come to the building, to come to the property and see people and engage in an outdoor service. So that's going to be similar to the June 7th, but that's going to happen on July 5th. 
After that, the month of July is going to be a twofold approach of still doing house church for anybody who feels comfortable and wanting to, but also beginning the process of having people re-enter the building on Sunday morning. Even as I say that, there's a lot of unknowns. We can't have everybody come rushing into the building uh, even come July 12th. If we had 700 people all of a sudden show up, we would have some serious issues. So even in that, we will be waiting to see how the guidelines loosen from our state and the CDC and the federal government between now and then to understand exactly how many people we feel comfortable as leadership having come together. But we're excited, starting in July, to have people begin entering the building on Sunday morning worship uh, and, and being able to see each other. But even with that, remember that it will be a new normal, not a return to normal, meaning that we will have potentially a number of practices and protocols that we will need to put in place. We're excited even this upcoming week to begin talking with our medical response team, Dr. Dwayne Oatman and uh, Dr. Missy Emmons, in terms of what those practices and protocols need to be. And we will begin to give you that information as we get closer. But the month of July now has a twofold approach of still doing house worship, but also beginning to have people come and join us on Sunday morning. Then moving into the month of August, specifically August 2nd, we we are excited and we can't wait to have everybody and anybody who wants to come and join us in August, hoping that and praying that by that time, uh, the restrictions will be even less to the point where we can truly engage with one another and enjoy that opportunity to once again be in the service here in the building together again in person. But even in that, we want to prepare you that it is most likely that we will move to two services as a church in order to better help spread out the number of people that are gathered together at the exact same time. We still need to work on a lot of the details that come with that, but it will be most likely that we have two services starting uh, at the very latest in August. So this is our plan looking at uh, kind of a three-stepped approach for the summer. Beginning in June with house church worship, moving in July to a combination of house church and in attendance, and then in August, full attendance for our church with multiple services. Now I realize and recognize that not every one of you is going to be happy even with that plan. And we understand that. And we're asking for your grace and your understanding in this time. There is so much fluidity to the situation that there is uh, the opportunity that things could still change. If the whole country begins to open up much faster than we're anticipating, we can do likewise. But we always want to be able to uh, under-promise and over-deliver and to be able to make sure that we're doing all that we can to honor God and honor the health and safety of our church family in that process. So that's the first part of our uh, approach to re-engaging ministry as it relates to Sunday morning ministry. The second is this, what we're doing throughout the week. And while we're going a little bit slower on Sunday morning, we're excited to begin ramping up things throughout the week. Because of the governor's order that we can have social gatherings up to 10 people, we feel more comfortable along with our ability uh, to make sure that we're practicing safe social distancing and health practices and protocols to begin to have people in the church throughout the week. And what I mean by that is opportunities for smaller gatherings more often. We are desperate to be able to do things like join together with you in prayer in person, to take communion with you, uh, to be able to simply maybe even do a Bible studies with you in person or some small worship opportunities. And so we're excited to be able in the coming weeks to begin to present those opportunities to you. We've talked about communion. What would it look like if uh, on a day throughout the week, we give multiple opportunities for groups of 10 or less to come into the building and do communion with myself or Pastor Steve uh, or, or some of our elders? We would love that opportunity. In smaller groups that we can ensure that there's safe social distancing practices, but still an opportunity for those of us that are desperate to get back in the building um, and to see people and to engage once again. Opportunities for prayer. I've already had elders on our board tell me they would be uh, honored to come on different nights of the week and spend time in prayer with smaller groups to be able to re-engage in those ways. Our staff is incredibly creative and they're excited about entering into those creative discussions about what it looks like uh, even in, in the next few weeks uh, to begin to have people to the building in smaller groups to re-engage with ministry. Uh, and so that will be something we will reveal more and more information about what those specific events are in the coming days and weeks. But we're excited with this ability to be able to offer a lot of options 
And hopefully that can be an encouragement to you. That if you are desperate to get in this building right away, then I can promise you, while it may not be on Sunday morning, there will be opportunities for you to re-engage with the church building and the staff and others in smaller groups. And if you're more hesitant and nervous about coming to church too early, we're taking a little bit more time in Sunday morning so that we don't have six, 700 people rushing in on a Sunday morning right away. Because we care about your health, we care about our witness to our community of what it says to them to, to be cautious in our approach, and yet not living in fear but leading and trusting that God is moving in this and knowing that the church is not bound by these walls and the church will continue to be strong no matter where we're worshiping or where we're gathered. So this is our approach. I know it's been a lot of information. We're going to make sure that we post that information online, uh, probably even in the coming hours after this service is done. In the coming days, we will have a survey going out to you because we want more information about how you're feeling, not just about this plan, but also about uh, your re-engagement with ministry. Uh, so we want more information, but we also want to make sure that you have all the information you need. And to that end, the one thing I want to make crystal clear is, is that you, if you have any concerns or criticisms or complaints, I will be available. And I want you to reach out to our office, to me, uh, and I would love to sit down with you if you need more one-on-one -on -one, um, time for me to be able to talk to you about this, for you to be able to share your concerns with me, for me to listen to you. Uh, we want to know, I want to know how you feel. And so if that is you, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to sit down with you and address any issues that you might have with our combined plan that we have as staff and leadership that we've presented to you today. So with that in mind, um, I think I practically just preached a sermon. Uh, but Brian, do you have anything that you feel that I've forgotten or left out or uh, missed in terms of that explanation? No, I, I think you really covered it well. I, there are just a few points I want to make. And um, I, number one, I want to thank you, Pastor Cam, and your leadership team. Mm -hmm. In a very short period of time, about five days, you all developed a really robust plan that even stood the test of time on Friday where things were taking place. And, um, and you did a great job. Thank you for responding in, 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 in such a quick way to you and your team. Mm -hmm. To my fellow board members, I, I thank you for being so reflexive to having meetings at weird hours of the week and being yeah. so faithful in giving input and insight. Um, yeah. We, are, we serve as a volunteer group of, of leaders for this ministry, and it's really a, an honor and pleasure serving with you. Yeah. And to our congregation, um, we, we realize there's confusion and, and, and anger or frustration and, and fear out there, and, and we hear that. We hear that as a board, and we want to keep you informed through um, whatever means we can. Pastor Cam and his team will keep you informed. This is a very fluid situation. The plan we believe will get us through the summer, even though there is some fluidity with what might be taking place in legislation. So we want to keep you informed. And like Pastor Cam said, please reach out to the church office if you have questions or anything that you might need um, clarity on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So thank you for this time. Uh, I, I know it was lengthy. I know it contained a lot of information, but I also know that you were yearning to hear what our plan was. Um, and we pray that, that uh, even if this was a disappointing plan to you or a really encouraging plan to you, uh, that you would just spend time in prayer for us and for the, the ministries of this church uh, and for uh, all of our hearts, that we would be able to find some sense of, of unity in the midst of this. And in the places where we can't find unity, that we would find an unbelievable sense of grace for one another in a really gray time. It'd be so much easier if it was black and white, but it's not. It's so gray. And we're all doing our best to navigate this time uh, to the best of our ability uh, in, in a way that we hope honors God to the greatest extent. So thank you for that. Brian, I wonder if you could just pray us out as sure. it relates to this. My Bow your heads with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, perfect is your name. Mm. We come to you each day, but today as a body, as a congregation, as a community, as a family, Lord. We resign ourselves to the reality that there's nothing taking place that we can control. We acknowledge that there's not one moment that you're surprised. There's not one moment in your plan that isn't already laid out. And Lord, we submit ourselves to your plan. And we don't wanna do one thing without you. We pray you would make our way clear Lord, I think of our families. I think of our susceptible members of our family who are concerned about their health. I pray for our members of our family who are ready 
to come back together and that you would draw us together as a unified body. Lord, thank you for our pastor. Thank you for our team of leadership. Thank you for our staff who have put themselves into a place to help us navigate this summer, Lord. And we look to you for clarity. Lord, it seems foggy and we look to you for a clear sky of understanding. We pray all these things in the name of your perfect son, Jesus Christ. Amen.